And lastly, uh, that is also a very important point. Uh, we don't uh, we just, we don't have rely just uh, north-south uh, collaboration, north-south relations, but also we have uh, we we would like to expect a more a kind of south-south cooperation and more autonomous, autonomous uh, research uh, network, and also uh, including some north uh, countries. Uh, a triangular, triangular co collaboration is also one, one of the very promising way in the future. So these are the point uh, that uh, we expect uh, uh, to have more more discussion in this uh, uh, session. Thank you for uh, your kind of attention. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Uh, in particular, the last four points, uh, which is the important element for effective networking. And um, uh, now uh, I'd like to ask uh, Inshoka Sensei uh, to elaborate more on this uh, research network, which is called Boka Network. So, Inshoka Sensei, please. I'd like to uh, introduce uh, the Roka Net uh, and speaking in Japanese. So, would you please prepare for that? And the Yes, uh, uh, is launched uh, just as just mentioned. Oh, I'm sorry. Loganet <laughs> is <laughs> I always do it for the wrong, wrong language, but in July, this was started up as one of these knowledge platforms. This is the diagram that describes the whole platform. We call it a platform. There would be national governments, cities, local communities, industries, funding agencies, banks, financial institutions, financiers, and knowledge providers like ourselves, groups of researchers like ourselves. We are gathering together to discuss what steps are necessary for the next stage of green growth. And then after getting together and discussing that, we then depart from the platform and then go back to our homes to implement those initiatives. That's what the platform is all about. UK, US, and all others are creating these platforms to support the developing countries. The role given to us is shown on this slide. You cannot say you mastered knowledge until you use it in the action on the ground. In other words, we want to mobilize our wisdom to realize in the real world low carbon society. That's the mission given to us. Low Carnet was started up and we are in the process of uh, making the organization We've described the nature of the network, and there are four salient characteristics. First of all, this is a network of leading researchers and research organizations that are at the forefront of low carbon policy making in each of these nations. And this is a gathering. We want to make it a gathering of leading researchers. This is not just about an ordinary scholar doing academic work because it's more urgent than that we have to in a short span of time change the direction of growth in asia and therefore we have to have people who are actually deeply involved in the policy making and tap on those knowledge resources the second point is science science policy dialogue which has already been described it has to be interdisciplinary by covering all areas. So dialogue is being promoted and at the very and in order to meet the high objective, what is necessary as policy leading research must be led by these researchers, so dialogue is indispensable. The third point is very crucial. Many countries have become already involved, but if we look at each country, 
does each country truly have human resources that are deeply rooted and are they accumulating data not really they would hire and retain consultants they would write a paper and that's the end and that does not become a rooted mechanism so ownership of knowledge the third point is about building a strong foundation so that each country would have uh, people that are deeply rooted in these endeavors and have knowledge accumulated and deeply rooted into the ground and south 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 north collaboration eventually we cannot just rely on north south but south south cooperation must be promoted but because of the situation in asia and the difference in the or or commonality in terms of the degree of uh development it might be difficult but there are countries that are at common level which can already talk to each other and already in Japan uh, we are seeing various phenomena of climate change drought and flood is at the center the fluctuation of red and green have become quite volatile you experience this day in day out and then at the bottom right torrential rain frequency is plotted and the frequency is significantly increasing and this is a fact is this anthropogenic we have to spend more time to verify but we cannot wait until the conclusions are reached if we look at the situation in japan this is one of the choices please take a look at the, the timing around the year 2000 and the red arrow is shown towards low carbon society and that's how much reduction has to take place 80 percent by 2050 how did we come with this 80 percent dr pachari talked about this say we target two degrees temperature increase this will be the resulting emissions reduction necessary that's how the calculation is done if it's that challenging then can we tolerate three or four degrees please look at the star at the level of 200 this is with a target of four degrees increase but then there could be stringent targets like 1.5 even if the target is relaxed to four to five degrees we have to do reduction it's very obvious we have to change the structure and if business as usual GDP will continue to grow as it's plotted on the top and uh, quality of life has to be be improved and at the same time we have to reduce energy consumed and co2 emitted 2020 or 2030 is at the center and the currently contemplating target are written but unless we have low targets the future generation will have to make greater efforts that's where we are specifically in Japan but then if we look at Asia the green line plots Japan and the Asian situation is described in the red leapfrog development in other words they don't have to go through the same path that Japan had experienced so they can promote much stronger investment towards low carbon growth and Asian countries should must learn by themselves and decide upon their own policies to leapfrog and this shows how important that could be energy economy and ecology the three E's are often talked about those there has to be a equilibrium between the three E's three E's but if there is short-term economic sluggishness and you try to make investments towards growth then that would go towards the opposite direction as low carbon and if a country relies overly on nuclear power generation we cannot per go to the right direction chronologically we have to think about the right direction the biggest obstacle is climate change as has been introduced so in that framework in the midterm we have to change the energy system which is under discussion and what would uh, be the catalyst to that change it would be the daily economic activity so within this uh, triangle within the f profile of the triangle we have to do profiling to decide upon what we need to do in the long run that's what japan and asian countries are to do green economy green investment green finances at the bottom of the pyramid we have to think about our economic activities and investment which was taken up at rio